All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, October 15th, 2012. And let's just start out with the results. I took a pre-market trade this morning uh, for 32 ticks profit on the euro. I took um, gold, 7 ticks profit, and I managed to get back to minus 4 ticks on the crude oil. Um, I didn't trade anywhere else this morning. There were plenty of other opportunities, so let me just go through the uh, let me just go through the trades. All right, um, on the ES during the break, there was a trade that set up here. I was describing to everyone what a clean pullback down to the BBC would be. There was one right here. Your entry on this would have been at uh, fourteen twenty nine, I think. Um, if you had been here, you would have rounded up to the nearest tick. Your order, I'm sorry, it would have been at fourteen twenty eight seventy five. Um, you would have rounded up to the nearest tick. Your order would have been sitting at 1428.50 in MIT order, which is market if touched. It would have hit 1428.50 and put you in at 1428.75, and it's gone two points since then. Um, in the live trading room, when this happened here, I said, look for the next pullback. And then once you get that, you should anticipate it getting up to, what did I say, guys? I think I said 33, 32, 33, something like that. Um, let me just look back here what the price was at then, 1427. It was 1432, 1433. That's what I was anticipating. Um, and so it's on its way. All right. Um, we had a nice pullback over here on the YM as well. Same area, same time frame, same, same spot. All right. Um, I think I had said over here, look for uh, 50 to 60 ticks from 3312. That would put it at 3362. It's not there yet, okay? Um, right here at uh, 3.10, it had a little bit of a resistance to get through, and it popped through that. And now looking further left, yeah, you got to go way back there to, uh, to see even further. Um, I didn't take any trades here on the YM or the ES, but that's what we were looking at, okay? We were in and around the weekly trading zone all morning. Uh, let me show you where that is. Hang on. Oh, you know what? I wiped it out this morning when I was, <laughs> I was showing, I was showing one of the partners something right at the end of the right at the end of the morning session, and I apparently deleted my weekly trading zone. But I believe it was right here, uh, twenty-five, twenty-six, I think, right in there. Um, let's see. Um, okay. That said, I've done the ES and the YM, the NQ. Did I take any trades? No, I didn't take any trades on the NQ because the ES and the YM were all over the weekly trading zones this morning. So I pretty much left the NQ alone. Um, when the ES and the YM during the during the break started to really move, the NQ moved with them. Um, the pullback right here, there was an opportunity. Um, there was an opportunity right in here. Shorting opportunity with bearish divergence. Uh, this was during the break, though. Um, let me go over what happened during the actual live trading session. Okay, in the morning, we had the open was right here, and I wasn't trading anything in here. I was saying it was choppy. We didn't really want to get involved. Um, it pulled down here, and we had the cycle going up too far. It tried to pull up here to a red spot, a selling spot on the yellow brick road right there. Um, nothing doing there. It didn't pull back far enough. It did over here finally, and it took it a long time to make its move down. Again, I didn't take any of these trades, um, but it did make a move down. There was a long opportunity in here. If this one, if you took this, um, it would have stopped you out. You know, you didn't have any profit really on it, and it would have stopped you out just as it hit this, and that gave a little bit of profit, but that, I believe, would have stopped you out too if you had taken it. Of course, I was advising not to trade the NQ this morning. Um, pulled back up, hit it over here for a nice move down, hit it there for a nice move down. This was after the news event at 10 o'clock. Then the NQ started to move pretty predictably. Um, hit it there and moved down. Hit it here and it went through it. Now I was explaining this morning how if you hit one like this and it doesn't exceed the prior swing, then the next one is likely to be a little weaker, possibly even, you no, know, meaningless. Um, in this case here, it hit it and it did move down about 8 ticks, but it didn't, again, didn't exceed it, and that's where the direction change was right there. All right, so that's something for all of you to look at. If you get a if you get a swing low pivot, 
and it pulls back up and it hits any of our areas of resistance here and it moves down and it starts to move down and it doesn't exceed that swing low pivot and then it pulls back and it hits any of our areas of resistance again and again it doesn't exceed the swing pivot that's a very very possible turning point in the market and you can see that's what it was right there and that goes for all the markets that's not just CNQ okay um was there a momentum trade on the ES at 11.15 with a green penetrated the envelope? <sighs> That's kind of a hard call. Um, what I would say here, I don't, that is not a trade by itself. Okay, by itself it's not a trade. What that does is it gives you some range. So the next time you do get a trade, you have some range you can apply to it. Like I said, look for it to get up to 14.33. And there it is. Okay. Um, I said that back here. I said look for it to get up to 1433 after the close on this. I also said if you look at your 4 tick range, um, let me jump over there to the ES 4 tick range. I said, you know, we do, we may not have any opportunity here on the 10K, but if you look at your 4 tick range, what time was that? That was at about 11 o'clock, uh, a little after 11. It was right in here. If you look at your 4 tick range chart, you may have an opportunity in there where you wouldn't have one on the 10,000 contract. In this particular case, they were at about the same time. You had some bullish divergence, pull back and test of the BBC right here. Okay, so they were at about the same time. Um, this one was at 11.54, and this one was at 11.54. So they were at the same time. But oftentimes, if you look at your four tick range, like you know, right back here, we wouldn't have done this because I believe the weekly trading zone was right above it. But... um. If you look at this, it pulled back to the blue right here on the yellow brick road. So you had an opportunity to enter into this 1423. Um, what time was that? That was at 1056. So that was way back here. Okay. In here somewhere. Um, if you look at your smaller time frames, when your larger time frames aren't giving you an opportunity, the smaller time frames may give you one. Okay. Um, let's see, I don't know what this trend line is, so I'm going to remove it. Um, I had drawn this trend line in right here earlier, saying that um, we needed to get a higher swing to be able to take a trade at that point right there. And then it, it moved up through it and came back down and gave the opportunity over here. Um, looking at this, just eyeballing this, if you, oops, sorry, that's a bad trend line. Um, if you were to draw a trend line, from the high of this, that's still a bad one. From the high of that bar, let's do it right here. The high of that bar, down to the BBC. Once it hits the BBC, a close above it should open the door to higher prices, and that's exactly what happened. All right, so even if you wanted to be super conservative and not buy it right here, just waiting for an up close above this trend line should have been indication enough to go, okay? Um, okay, now I'm going to move off the ES, and I can I can jump over to a higher time frame for you for a second, Frank. There it is right there. Bam. What do you think of that? <laughs> um, that's your 30 minute. Here's the 15 minute. Um, was this this morning? Yep, this was this morning. Right in there. The 30 minute looked a lot better. Okay. Uh, let's see. Right over here on the NQ. Right over here on the NQ right now. Um, we have bullish divergence. The cycle's headed down a little bit. So there's a chance that the BBC may not hold here. It's already given an up close and bounced a little bit. You know, on the up close, the cycle was still headed down quite a bit. You may just want to wait and see if it pulls down here. All right. Um... Now, I covered the NQ2, I think, didn't I? I did. All right, let me do the 60, okay, because that was my big trade of the day, but it was actually pre-market. Um, it was right in here. This was about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I didn't have the weekly trading zones at the time, so I didn't see it going into the zone, you know, because I didn't get the weekly trading zones until about 6. Um, but right in here, we had a break to the upside when the European markets opened up. This was the bar that closed above and, ten and moved it up. This was the bar that closed above that. All right, so jumping in right there and holding on for the move up to here. And, yeah, it was a long time. Um, but 
It was slow moving, but it moved. Okay. Um, and that was, you know, 32 ticks. Okay. Uh, were there more opportunities on the on the euro this morning? Yes, there were. There's there was one right here, right at the uh, right at the end this morning. Um, there was another one right in here. Of course, you know, now you can see where the weekly trading zones are, so you wouldn't be taking these trades because of the zones. But you see it's testing the BBC with the divergences and the divergence over here. You know, this is a four tick range chart. So we're looking at the divergences and the bounces off the BBC and the bounces off of the uh, yellow brick road here, the yellow line. All right. Now, what we anticipate when it hits either a red spot or a blue spot is you're going to get at least one bar's bounce out of it. It hit it here and it gave about a bar and a half. Um, that's what we were looking for. Didn't hit it here. It did hit it here. It gave about two bars. Um, over here, it gave about two bars. And you can see, I think we're back into Friday now, or even Thursday maybe. But uh, but that's what it was, right? We didn't have a whole lot of action there this morning. There was that one big move that I was able to get in on, and that's it. Yep. Yeah, and I didn't even I didn't even know at that time, Frank, where the zones were, because. Uh, it was too early. Um, all right, that was the 6E. We didn't take anything on the soybeans this morning, but there were a couple of things that set up. I think I highlighted them right at the open right here. There was a shorting opportunity. Okay, and there was another one right in here, another one right in here. And right now, off the BBC, there was one right there, and we have a little bit of bullish divergence right now. But, of course... Everybody knows the volume drops off the soybeans. Um, about, I don't know, half hour ago. Half hour to an hour ago. All right, now gold. Gold. I traded a little gold. I didn't trade any of the Russell, though. I wish I would have. Um, the gold, I had a couple of trades, I think. Did I have two? No, I, I had one. I had one long trade right in here. But you can see on the gold all the areas that I've highlighted. This is another four tick range. All the charts that I'm going to show from from here on to the end of the recording are all four tick range charts. All right, so the setups are all exactly the same. I don't know what happened in here at 9:52, but something happened and you can see right here from 9:52 to 9:53, it pumped out all these bars. I actually had an order on to short a pullback up here, but it never pulled back. Um and I took the order off once I saw it started to go uh started to go a little crazy like that. So we just let it go for a little while, and then we started to highlight the trades again. Yeah, like this one right here, and this one right here. Um, the problem with the two candles there, though, Frank, is that you have to wait for the up close on the second one, or you have to wait for the close on the second one, as opposed to just buying the, buy the actual line, or selling the actual line. That's the problem with the two candles. Um, no, look, there's five right here. <laughs> um, but I mean, like right here, for instance, you could have an order on to sell right here, and you know maybe it would have gotten filled, maybe not. But uh, but it pulled up and it just tapped it and it dropped off like a stone. Um, and you can see it did that again and again and again in here this morning. That was all the pre-market though. The order that I, I mean, the trade that I took, the one trade that I managed to take was right over here. Okay. Uh, we had bullish cross test of the BBC with bullish divergence. I got long in here and took profit up there. And then it turned around and gave a shorting opportunity, and I didn't take any other trades on the gold. I mean, you can see there were a bunch more. One, two, three, four. Um, then down here, the uh, the cycle portion of the slingshot is in the middle, so there's nothing nothing you can do in there. Right in here was five, um, six. Right here was another one. You can see right now it's moving up off the BBC with bullish divergence. Now, on all these charts, guys, when you get the divergence like this, what you anticipate is that this green line is going to move into the cycle. Okay, this green line is going to move into the cycle. When I say divergence, I'm talking about divergence down here on the slingshot. All right, I'm not talking about the hidden divergence, so the divergence between price and, and some lines here on the slingshot. I'm talking about divergence on the slingshot between the green line and the cycle. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to put gold away, 
and I'll bring the Russell over and cover that one quickly. And the Russell had some pretty good opportunities this morning. I didn't trade any. I didn't have enough DOMs to trade all the markets that were given the opportunities this morning. You know, I closed a couple of them so I could open other ones, and it ended up some of the ones that I left open didn't. I didn't trade on at all. Anyway, um, with the, with the Russell. We had the bullish cross, the pullback down, tested the BBC, but it went right through it, and right here it stopped and gave you know two and a half bars profit. All right, then it went through, came back, tested the BBC, gave the down close, and moved down. It tried to move back up, but it didn't make it. It put in a lower swing, then it came back up, and it made it this time. This right here was a trade in two ways. One is it pulled back up, tested the BBC, and gave a down close with the bearish divergence, and the other one was it hit the it hit the yellow line right there, although it was actually red. So you could have sold it right up here. All right. Um, I explained to people how this did not put in a lower swing, so the next one was suspect and probably weaker, and it was. And then it went through and changed directions. And now you have bullish divergence. This is headed the wrong way. Now you have bullish divergence, um, like this. Okay. So now you get a test of the BBC with an up close, and then you can get long on it. Um, it happened again right here, and that's pretty much it. It went right through it over here. It didn't give the uh, it didn't give the bounce down, the one bar's limit down. It looks like um, right here you got you know a bar and a half. Okay, that was the Russell, so it was tradable, and I know some guys traded it and made money with it. Now crude oil started out. It was pretty mean to me right at the open. Um, I missed right at the very open right here. I missed these beautiful trades right in here. All right, this was 9 o'clock. Big giant move down. Red, red. Didn't pull back far enough. Then finally it did right here, right after the open. I missed that one. I missed that one. Um, I took one right over here, and it stopped me out. It changed directions and stopped me out. Then I went in the opposite direction right here, and it changed directions again and stopped me. Um, this one I took and I got break even on over here. You know I was, I was chipping away at it after after I got this one and this one. I think I was down 14 ticks, and I took this one, got a break even on it. I took this one, and I got a break even. But look at what this break even one did. If I hadn't moved my stop to break even, you know it dropped all the way down there. There was another short one here. This I explained when they're when the signals are conflicting, meaning we're about to get a long signal here, but we have a short signal here. I said you could fade this down to the BBC, then at the BBC, clear your trade, look for it to go long. All right, and that's what that one did. I didn't trade anything in there. If that is too confusing or you know just too risky for you, then just don't do it. There's always going to be another trade. Um, we got a bullish cross, pull back down, test of the BBC. I got long in here, and I ended up taking break even pretty quick on that one. It went up here, and it gave me some profit, but on the same bar, it pulled back down, stopped me out of break even, and then it moved up. Um, I took a little profit on this one. Then this was a momentum trade in here. I took some profit on that one. This one was a uh, bounce off the red area, okay, down to the BBC. I took that profit, and then. Um, I didn't take the up close right here, not that up close, because we didn't have divergence down here, but I waited for the next up close, because the green closed in the direction of the brown. That was the momentum trade. I took that, and I believe I got six ticks out of that. Um, you can see it pulled back down, and it's been moving around quite a bit in here, um, but that was during the break. It pulled back down here and gave a nice bounce off of that. Right in here, we had bullish divergence after a test of the BBC. Over here, same thing, bullish divergence after a test of the BBC. Over here, again, same thing. Um, over here, same thing. Um, let's see. And that was that was pretty much that. All right. Um, all right. I think that's all the markets, isn't it? Did I do gold? I did do gold. All right, that's it. All right, guys, um, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply. Take the free trial. If you have taken a free trial with us or you're on your free trial, 
Um, if you have any questions about anything, uh, you guys know how to get a hold of us. Um, you should have an email from us with all the stuff you need to download, all the charting platforms that you see, all the indicators, everything that you see here. There is an email that you have with instructions to download that. There's a video that says, you know, download your platform. And if you watch that video, it'll show you how to download the platform, download the indicators. You can have all this stuff. And if you do download it and you want to have the exact same layout that I have, just send an email to support at cfrn.net that says layout in the subject, and I will send you my layout. Okay? Simple as that. I can send you my layout with a little video that shows you how to import it. Um, all right, with that, I am going to wrap it up.